What up s'mores? I'm Shannon Morse. Welcome to my YouTube channel all about travel and technology. And today I have a very exciting review for you. It's one I have been looking forward to as well because I was very curious if I would like this device or not. It's the Google Pixelbook Go, which just came out a couple weeks ago. And the model that I have is the one that costs $849. I was curious if I would like this or not because I am a power user, I'm a gamer, I'm an editor and I was very curious to find out if I would be able to do those kind of things on this device or if it would be too limiting. So I do have some thoughts and I'm really excited to share those with you today as well as what I think would justify that price. So before I get started on this review I also wanted to thank at El Boro who decided to support me over at buymeacoffee.com slash snubs. My buy me a coffee link is where you can go to support me if you just want to send me a, a coffee or two to keep me totally caffeinated for these kind of videos. You can also check out patreon.com slash Shannon Morse, which is the Patreon that gets you access to a whole bunch of perks and behind the scenes content. So thank you El Burro, and now we're going to check out the Pixelbook Go. So the Pixelbook Go starts at $649 for the lower end model and it goes all the way up to $1,399. That's right, for a Chromebook, it's quite expensive. Again, the one that I have is $849, and this one has a Core i5, 128 gigs of storage, and it has eight gigs of RAM. Now, the color you see here is just black, but they also have a not pink version on the website. Both of those are made completely out of this magnesium material, so a nice metal design. It actually surprised me a little bit because when I saw pictures of this online, I thought this was made out of a, like a rubberized textured material or maybe plastic. That's what it looked like to me, but it's actually all magnesium. So I was pretty surprised at how sturdy and how durable it felt as opposed to being completely plastic. Now when you open it up from that magnetic closure it does feel really sturdy. It doesn't wobble around, the screen stays at whatever angle you choose to open it at, and the farthest you can actually bend it out is right about to this angle right there. But the hinge that the screen is on feels really nice and tight. It doesn't feel like it's going to go anywhere. It's nice. It's steady. So I really like how this laptop feels in my hands. You can immediately tell by the size that it's pretty small for a laptop. Uh, this one is 13.4 millimeters thin, so it's very, very thin. And it's also only 2.3 pounds for the full HD version, which is the version I have. There's also a 4K Ultra HD display version, and that one's only 2.4 pounds. I was curious when I started to use this if I would enjoy this full HD screen, and I actually do. And I think it's because the size of the laptop is small enough that the pixels per inch on here, even though it's only full HD, really give it a nice texture. So it looks beautiful. For example, I love this backdrop with the cityscape and the temple and the stars in the background. It just looks beautiful because each of those stars is really nicely defined. And the brightness of the screen is just enough to give me that perfect appeal for what I'm looking at on that screen. So as far as the display goes, it is 13.3 inches and it is a touch screen as well. This one is full HD at 1920 by 1080 and it's at 166 pixels per inch. Now the 4K UHD molecular display is 3840 by 2160. That one is 331 pixels per inch. This is a darker wallpaper, but I also wanted to show you the brightness scale on here. You can go completely dark on that brightness scale. You can also go all the way up and that nit brightness is about 368 nits of brightness. Now to compare that to the Pixel 4 XL, the phone that I have been working with, the Pixel 4 XL is at 444 nits brightness, so it's a little bit brighter. This screen, not so much. But with that said, 368 nits brightness is pretty on par with a lot of laptops on the market. Now the bezels on the top and the bottom are relatively large. However, I do like the fact that this is such a nice wide screen, so it does give you a really nice effect. The bottom one, the chin bezel, you could say, it does feel pretty big as well as the top one. I think they could take a note from like Dell XPS with their 13 inch laptop and maybe make those bezels a little bit smaller because you can still put a webcam up at the top as, as we have recently figured out. With that said, I do think the bezels make it look like it's cheaper than it actually is. 
so some people might not really like that as much. Even though this is a touchscreen and I can mess around on here with my fingertips, there is no Google Pixel Pen support and I really wish there was and I was very disappointed to find out that it does not support the previous Pixelbook models pen because that would give you so much more definition with what you're doing on the touchscreen, which I just can't get from my fingertips, especially if I'm doing things in Photoshop and Lightroom. Moving on from the display, which also has very nice viewing angles as well, I did want to mention what you get on the insides. So you get an 8th gen Intel Core M3 i5 or i7 Y series CPU. The one I have is an i5. You also get 8 gigs or 16 gigs of RAM. I have 8 gigs in here. And you also get 64, 128, or 256 gigs of SSD storage. I'm really surprised that they started with 64 gigs of storage on this laptop because even though it's Chrome OS, you are still going to use a lot of local storage for things that a creator would do, like if you're gonna do photography edits and stuff. You can do a lot of that in the cloud now, but if you want that speed, the reliability, and the ability to save your files locally so that you don't lose anything, a lot of times having that local storage is really necessary. So I would like for them to start with a higher storage option and keep it at the same price, but I don't know if that would be a possibility. There are a couple of screws on the bottom, but I wouldn't necessarily say that this is something that is customer upgradable. This does charge via one of the USB-C ports. There are two USB-C ports on it. There's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a front 1080p duo cam for your webcam. There is no SD and no micro SD card slot and no, Thunderbolt 3 is not available. Now to move on to the keyboard and everything around the keyboard, first thing I wanted to mention is the dual front facing speakers, which honestly are really loud and very clear. I was actually really surprised at how nice these sounded when I was listening to music. Of course, there is a lack of bass, as you will always find with laptop speakers. But when I was listening to vocals for music as well as podcasts and YouTube videos, sounded really nice and it was so loud so you would definitely have to turn this down if you are in an environment that requires quiet now let's talk about hush keys for a second and i did want to give you a bit of a test so you can see how it sounds Now, as you can tell, my nails do clicky clacky on the keyboard a little bit, and that's just how I type, but overall, it is definitely a very, very quiet keyboard to use. It is also backlit, which I found to help a lot in the evening whenever I was using this and I just had the laptop in my lap, which you can totally do because it's also fanless. It's definitely not mushy, and they do provide some tactile feedback, but it's very slim, so there's not a whole lot of travel. Now, I did get a little bit free out by not having function keys those are replaced by specific feature keys up at the top that do specific things so there's one key specifically for brightening and one to lighten the colors or darken there's one for muting volume up volume down there's one specifically for refresh which would take the place of the f5 key there is no number pad next to the side and of course that also means that there's not going to be a numlock key and there's no caps lock either which i found to be kind of odd there's also no delete key but they do have some keyboard shortcuts to kind of replace those you can use alt backspace instead of delete there's also Control c and v for copy and paste Control x just like you would find on a windows machine for cut caps lock can be found with alt and launcher the little launcher button and then you can get access to your google assistant with the assistant button and the launcher with the launcher button which is kind of like the start menu on windows it's definitely different and hard for me to get used to because i am so used to the keyboard shortcuts and the keys that you would have available on a windows laptop but it's not necessarily a bad thing because you find your not needing all of those additional keys on this machine. Now moving down from the keyboard we have the trackpad and hallelujah it is a glass trackpad and I am so happy to know that it is glass because I love glass trackpads. They are beautiful and easy to use. 
They are smooth. They don't grip your fingers whenever you try to use them, which is wonderful. I love glass trackpads so much. Like I'm obsessed. It's a weird thing, I know, but I'm obsessed. I say trackpad, it's a touchpad, whatever. But with that said, there are a couple of different strokes that I wanted to mention that you can do on this. You can swipe up with three fingers to see your open windows. You can click a link with two fingers to open the link in a new tab. You can also swipe left or right with three fingers to change different tabs. So moving on from there, of course we have the battery, which can last up to 12 hours on one single charge from 100%. Google does state that you can get two hours of battery use after just 20 minutes of charging. The battery in here is a 47 watt hour battery. And honestly, it's pretty amazing. Like I only had to charge this thing once after the first three days that I was using it. Now, of course that's with normal usage. So I didn't have this thing on straight for eight hours. Of course, then I would have to charge it at the end of the day because it would only have like four hours left. But that was on and off throughout the day. You know, I was switching to my desktop and then going over to this one. So 12 hours, that's a lot. Now, of course, you can get that maximum of 12 hours by doing things like dimming your screen, turning off Bluetooth, Bluetooth is enabled in here, as well as just closing the screen whenever you are not using it so that the screen turns off. But in my testing, that 12 hours is truthful and it's really, really nice to mess with a laptop that can last so freaking long. Now, let's talk about Chrome OS because that is the operating system you get on this machine. Chrome OS does come with virus protection just built in because it has that Titan C security chip and it's all up to date. Now I noticed that some applications, for example, from Adobe were just not available on this machine. However, they are available on Android. Take for example, Adobe Rush. Adobe Rush is what I would normally use to edit videos on an Android device, or I was hoping on the Pixelbook Go, but Adobe Rush is just not available on this machine. That means that I can't edit videos the way that I would want to as a part of my normal workflow with this laptop and that's really unfortunate. On the other hand, Adobe does have Lightroom and Photoshop enabled on these machines. So you can download those on the Pixelbook Go, but both of those are very pared down from what you would normally get with a desktop. Basically, I found that if there is no Chrome app available, then you just can't use it on this computer unless it runs in the browser. Do you like video games? I know I do, so I tried to download video games on this, but unless they were available through the Google Play Store, you could not download them. Now, there is one reason why I would recommend this to gamers, and that is because if you are interested in Google Stadia, this will be supported. You will be able to play video games on the Pixelbook Go via Stadia. I'm gonna test that with this and see how it works and see how good it looks because I'm very, very curious to see if that would be worth it. I mean, having a sub 1000 laptop that could play Stadia games, especially the ones that are included, sounds pretty cool. So this machine is great for simple use. It's great for hopping online and doing things like checking your email or working in Google Docs or maybe even working with Google Keep or Wonderlist or doing simple things with Lightroom and Photoshop. But if you wanna do anything that's workload heavy power user, you probably couldn't use this machine to get it done. I basically felt limited when I was using the Pixelbook Go if I wanted to do anything major, cause then I would be like, oh, I have to hop onto my desktop to be able to do that. Or, oh, I have to work on my, my gaming laptop to be able to get that video edit done or something like that. Now with that said, and this is the last thing I wanted to mention because it's really cool and I feel like a lot of people are just not gonna mention it because a lot of people don't care. Linux in beta is available on the Pixelbook Go. And that to me is so cool. And that is the reason why I would suggest this laptop to people sub a thousand dollars for this mid range model. Now I'm obviously just doing some simple pings to 8.8.8.8 on here, just to show you that you can run the terminal on here. You can run Linux commands on this machine and it's built in. All you have to do is enable it in the settings and then you have a Linux terminal. So you can install Linux apps and all of them are basically sandboxed into their own little atmosphere on the Pixelbook Go. So none of them affect Chrome OS. Now I believe what is running on here as far as distros go is Debian, but don't quote me on that. I might be incorrect. 
uh, but it seems to work quite fine. I'm able to do everything I would normally be able to do in a terminal, and I think that's really cool. So if you are a developer, if you're somebody who needs the Linux terminal, and you don't necessarily want to deal with like a hack box, then you might want to consider this because it's already built in and it's in beta, but it seems to work just fine. Now, admittedly, I have not done much with Linux on the Pixelbook Go, but I remember back in the day when Chromebooks first came out and you basically had to hack the thing to get Linux to run on it. So I love the fact that it's just built in for you. It makes life so much easier for devs. So I found that the Pixelbook Go is not necessarily something that you would use if you are a power user. It's definitely limited in its capabilities, mainly because of Chrome OS. You can easily do a lot of cool things with the hardware specs that are in here, but Chrome OS does limit you. So would I recommend the Pixelbook Go? Yes, but not to everyone. They're definitely touting this as something that will get you started with whatever your creative process is, but it's not the main machine that you would use in your life. This is going to be something secondary, and most of that is because it is limited by Chrome OS. You can't use a lot of power user abilities that you would normally be able to get out of a Windows or a Mac environment, even a Linux environment, honestly. But if you want this just to have something that is useful to hop on Online to get some work done in docs or to check your email like I mentioned previously, to schedule with meetings and stuff, or to just hop online and actually do meetings since you can do Hangouts and Skype and stuff like that on here. Then this could end up being a very useful machine for you, especially since it's so, so lightweight and it's so easy to travel with and just stick in your tote bag or your backpack and go. It's so nice to have around. So would this replace my Alienware lab? top that I currently have? Absolutely not, because I can't do everything on this machine that I can do on that one. But this is a really, really nice addition to my life. I can absolutely imagine taking this to a coffee shop and getting all of my like little tasks, like my email and scheduling meetings and hopping on here and editing everything in Photoshop and sticking it up on Instagram and scheduling my Twitter tweets all that extra stuff that I have to do behind the scenes that's just annoying to get done and I never want to do because I don't want to hop on a five pound laptop to do it. I could do all this and it's so easy to get it done. I've currently been using this like constantly when I'm sitting and watching Netflix on my sofa and I just want to bang out a bunch of emails at once. It's so easy to do so when you're on this really nice machine. Not to mention, I'm not going to bother my husband if he's watching a show with me because of the hush keys. So it's super quiet to use and he doesn't even notice that I'm on my machine. I know I should pay attention to Netflix, but watching something for like 30 minutes or even an hour is just, it's way too hard for me to just sit there and do nothing. I'm, I'm constantly needing to find a way to be productive. Okay, okay. So let me know what you think. I would love to hear your opinions down in the comments below. I was really excited to check this out and I'm still excited to mess with it more because it is a really nice addition to my life. I wanted to thank Google for sending this out to me as a gift from Google. And of course, I also wanted to ask you if you are interested in more reviews like this, definitely hit the subscribe button down below, hit that little notification bell icon. I feel just dirty saying that because I feel like every other YouTuber that constantly tells you to turn on more notifications because that's what we need in our life. Don't turn on those notifications. Just check out my channel throughout the week because I'll have new episodes posting like constantly. So you don't have to turn on the notifications if you don't want to. And um, yeah, comment and like this episode if you enjoyed it. I think that's about it. Thank you so much S'mores for supporting me and thank you so much for watching this video till the end. I appreciate you. <laughs> My name's Shannon Morris, and I will talk to you soon on the next video. Bye.